Hello again, party people. How are we doing? Today I'm doing a double ep in one, repainting both the Winged Knight and the Titanite Demon from the board game. The giveaway is still running to the end of this series, and there's only three episodes left, so stick around to the end to find out how to enter. And engage in jolly cooperation. Now, you might be asking yourself, why am I painting two bosses in one video? I'd like to tell you it's part of a planned artistic choice, but the sad truth of the matter is, is that the card in my main camera, the front facing one, got corrupted and I lost all of the front facing footage for the Titanite Demon, so I had to resort to only having my B cam footage. In instead of scrapping the video, I thought, no, let's keep it, we'll tag it on to the end of another boss. So here we are with the Winged Knight and the Titanite Demon. So confessions out of the way, it's time to take a closer look at the big old fat boy from Dark Souls 3 and you can see from the original painted one from last year that I did, it's lacking any sort of real depth to it, but the base does look pretty cool and it really does elevate the model a fair amount. So I'm gonna start off by getting the big boy primed. Lovely. Now for the next step, Zenithal highlighting over the black prime, same as we've done before. High up angle, facing downwards at an angle and spraying the ink over, focusing more concentrated amounts of ink to the outermost exterior parts. Wonderful. Next up, contrast paints. So for the cloth on the armor, I wanna make it a bit more vivid than the previous version. So I'll start off with some Talisar Blue. And with this, I'm just thinning it down in the airbrush and just applying it to the different cloth parts. Don't worry too much about any overspill onto the armor as we'll be painting over that later. Then to add some darker shade to this blue, I'm just gonna go over some of the darker shaded areas with this darker blue, just to enhance those shadows a bit further. For the metallics, I decided to go with metallic Citadel paints this time instead of doing some NMM, just to try and mix things up a bit. So for the darker shades of the armor, I'm just gonna dry brush on some Iron Warriors. And the nice thing with doing zenithal highlighting is that you've already got your highlights and your shadows mapped out. So you can just follow suit with that and just dry brush the darker tones onto the darker parts of the ink layer. I was tempted to maybe do the Golden Winged Knights and a few people in the comments did say that would be a cool one to do. But because I'm giving this set away, I wanted to keep it to the actual board game style and keep it to the actual Winged Knight model itself. They're also a different style of knight with bigger wings. I think they're called the Ascended Winged Knights, the gold ones, I seem to recall. Maybe when I print a winged knight, I'll do the golden ones, that could be quite cool. Now actually thinking about it, how cool would it be to do like a winged knight diorama, like of the first one that you encounter that's walking among all the dead bodies around the fountain? I'm just gonna write that one down. Anyway, next up is the metallic highlights, so I'll just use some Runefang steel and dry brush this onto the lighter areas of the armor. Necron Compound is also a really great dry metallic paint that can really bring out some really vivid highlights on metallic as well. Then for some shading, I'm going to take some Abaddon Black and take it down to a glazed consistency and start filling in all the little shadowy regions just to enhance these dark areas more against the metallic highlights. Then just to enhance some of the blue from earlier and to colour in the wings, I'll just be using some Cantor Blue and going back over the raised areas to brighten them up a bit. And to take it one step further, I'm gonna add in some Lotham Blue and just target these much finer areas to really bring out some of this blue highlight throughout. Now for a little je ne sais quoi, I'm gonna pop some of this coagulated blood from Green Stuff World onto the model, starting off with the halberd. The great thing about this stuff is the more layers you build up with it, the color not only gets stronger, but the actual density of the blood increases as well. So the blood looks both darker and thicker. So you can spread it out around the armor onto places where the blood might have splattered to. And then you can really focus on some real dense areas to the parts like the sharp edge of the blade where the most blood would be pooling. And once you've done that, you get something that looks a little bit like this, which is pretty cool. So now let's compare the two. 
The old one is a lot darker, it has a lot less life to it, fitting for Dark Souls in a way, but the base is still pretty cool in my opinion. I think it's the favorite one I did from this set last year, but the color and the shine and the blood effect on the new one definitely works better in my opinion. You can really tell when they're side by side how heavily I relied on Null Noil back then. Thinking back, I don't even think it was Null Noil. I think I only had Agrax Earthshade when I started out on this. Christ. But there we are, the Winged Knight. Now for the sad bit, my deleted Titanite demon footage. As an animator and editor by trade, it breaks my heart to have deleted and corrupted footage on projects and this one's no different, but there we go. What can you do? So hello from my B cam angle. As you can see here, we have the lovely demon dude ready for priming. If memory serves me correctly, I think this was actually the very first model I painted ever. It's also like my most top performing reel on Instagram, which is just insane to me for some reason. So after priming with some Chaos Black, it's on to Zenithal highlighting, same as we did before with the Winged Knight, and spraying down with some white ink from a high angle. Now I'm just gonna try and slowly airbrush this fella, starting off with some Ishin Grey, as this is the darkest of greys that I'll be using, and I'll be targeting the lower regions from the opposite side that the Zenithal highlight came down from. So this should act as our first layer of shadows trying to keep to the areas that we have already outlined with the highlighting job and avoiding going too far up into the brighter tones. But the reason we're starting with the darker tones and working up means that we can go back over it with lighter greys if we get a bit too much shadow going on. The next grey will be Celestra grey, which is my favorite grey tone, which is a sad sentence to say. But because it has a lot more color than other greys, it has a slightly sort of greenish bluish hue to it, which is a really nice thing for things like stone. Then an even lighter grey tone, I'll be using some administratum grey and using this on the last little highlight parts left on the body. To go back over some of these smaller, more concentrated shadow regions, I'm just going to use some of the carbon black ink and really only focus this on the innermost parts of the shadow as I don't want it coming any further over the darker shades. As you can see, just in these little tucked away recesses here. Just to tie it all together a bit more, I thought it might be a good idea to apply a thin, 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 thin wash of Basilicanum Grey over the body, just to kind of bring the tones together a bit more, but just making sure to keep it very thin so you're not adding a whole bunch of new color and removing any of the original shading to it. It's not really a mandatory step, but when I get an idea in my head, it's hard for me to kind of stop, so bear with me. Then with some Mephiston Red, I just want to add color into this little indent inscription on the neck of the demon here. And to finish off the model, I just want to go back over these little lines and cracks in the model, black lining them to give them some contrast and shadow. Well, so far I've managed to survive the editing process with just the one camera and not have a breakdown about it, so that in itself is a win for me. You should have seen how pissy I got when I found the footage was gone. Woo boy, not pretty. And there we have him. This is how he looks compared to the old one. The old one looks very sticky because I think I probably slapped a gallon of oil over it. The new one has a bit more of a gradient and a tone to it. I still wanted to keep it subtle and do nothing crazy with it. The airbrush does seem to make it a bit softer, so I might go back over at a later date with a couple brushes just to enhance some of the grit a bit more. But for now, I'm gonna leave it there because sadly I don't have my usual outro on the main camera. <laughs> so from this angle, I will bid you adieu and I want to thank you again for sticking with me this far. But before I go, it's time to discuss the giveaway. As explained in previous repainting videos on Sundays, I will be releasing a new video as part of this repainting series. And by the end of this series, we will have a fully painted collection of the main board game set. This is the prize. This exact and complete Dark Souls board game painted by me. To enter, all you have to do is make sure you're subscribed to the channel, leave a comment below answering this week's question, and I will be picking a winner from the comments across all videos in this repainting series. So, the more videos you comment on, the more chance you have to win. 
Last week I asked you to tell me what character or boss that I haven't already done and there have been some really good suggestions so far from Sekiro to Bloodborne across Demon Souls to I mean all of the Dark Souls games and Elden Ring as well. Ebrietes was a great suggestion. Midir gets mentioned so much to me in the comments and all of the great ones from Bloodborne were suggested, which is a really cool idea. I mean, I'm gonna try and do them all, of course. You know, that's the whole point of this YouTube channel. But anyway, this week I want you to comment below and tell me your best memory of playing any of these games. You know, I've had people previously tell me some really wholesome memories of playing the game with friends and what it meant to them. And to be honest, I just, want to hear more of that it's really nice to hear you know is it the first time you overcame a really tough boss and that sense of euphoria you got doing it the first time is there a specific moment you realized how much you love the game or was there something outside of playing the games that stood out to you most you know it should be really nice to know but as ever gang i hope you enjoyed today's video i do apologize for the technical difficulties that I did face. If you did like it, please drop a like and hit the subscribe button. It really does help the channel grow and reach new people. And I just want to keep bringing you bigger and better videos each week. Also click that bell to turn on notifications while you're at it. So you get updated the moment a new video drops. But as ever, thank you for spending your time with me and I will see you all in the next one. Peace out gang. And don't you dare go hollow.